Peter got mad at me that morning because I kept saying, Peter, yeah. they're going to play on Christmas Day. I'm not saying I want it. Th- this idea, whether it was Mike North or Hans Schroeder or anybody from the league office, when they say we're not going to play on Christmas Day, when it lands on a Tuesday or Wednesday, my immediate reaction was to quote you, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> they are going to play on Christmas Day. And I said... When the owners get together in March and they talk about how many people are watching football on Christmas and how many aren't watching basketball, there is no way in hell they're coming out of that meeting and saying, yep, we're not going to play Christmas games this year. That was the least surprising development. Again, that's another one that I wish I would have remembered it to say, get ready, folks. Guess what's happening this week? They're going to tell us they're playing football games on Christmas. I guess I didn't need to do it because I already said it. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. The great and powerful Oz has spoken. They're following the money. They're not going to give up 28.7 million average viewers on a three-game sweep of the NBA this past Christmas. I'm just surprised they're not playing three games. They announced yesterday they're going to play two games Christmas Day 2024. Why not go ahead and do three? Why not take over the whole day? Don't even give the NBA an opening to take part of the day get it done, and play the games. I figure next time around, it'll be a Tuesday or a Wednesday in the future, depending upon leap year and whatnot. They skipped over Tuesday this year with leap year, but when it happens again, I I fully expect there'll be three games. They're not going to do two. They'll find a way to make it work, and they'll play three games. Yeah, no, I I mean, yeah. I mean, they're going to do that on, what if next year, so the year after this, Thanksgiving's on a Thursday, right? I mean, Christmas is on a Thursday. Thanksgiving's always on a Thursday. I mean, you know what I meant to say. Christmas is on a Thursday. I mean, was, were we not going to play Christmas oh. on a Thursday? They're all, no, I mean, they'll yeah. do the three right. games. They'll do the of games course. on a Thursday. Right, they, they said in the past, yeah. they said yeah, they won't do it when it's on Tuesday or Wednesday. Right. That's right. what they said. Right. And, we and I, that threw was, the ch- I threw the, the yeah, challenge flag the from bull the get-go. Crap. Bull crap. I mean, yeah, we've called this, right? I mean, to me, it's like, duh, of course, right? I mean, yeah, you took over Sundays. You took over Thanksgiving. Why not take over the other special day? during that time of the year, let alone, come on, it's it's the heart of football season still. I, I feel like America, we're not ready to turn the page there at that point and go, okay, it's basketball time. We're not. I mean, we're, it, it's, it's like, oh, my gosh, it's the end of the season. Who's going to get in the playoffs? That's all you really care about here in America right now, at least the majority of sports fans. And, I mean, Mike, not only were you all over this and I piggybacked with you, but another thought we had where I think this cracks the door open to start it. Right, is that we're going to see games in the regular season on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. That's going to happen. It's like I just feel like this is a a precursor to that. Oh, okay, we found out we want to kind of finagle the schedule to make it work. Oh, okay, and, you know, now we can make it work in week nine too. Why can't we do it then? I just – I'm hoping that's the start of it. But I'm glad to see football on Christmas Day, and I'm, of course, not surprised like you. Keep this in mind. The same people who told us there won't be – football on Wednesdays on Christmas are now saying there won't be football on other Wednesdays. Here's Roger Goodell from yesterday explaining that the only Wednesday we'll see football is when Wednesday is Christmas. Here he is. We've done this. Uh, in fact, um, you know, with COVID, it was actually a learning opportunity. I think it was the first time we played on a Wednesday. Um, it will not be a regular thing. It'll be when Christmas falls on a Wednesday. Uh, but the time period between games has been done before. We have not seen any elevation of injuries. Uh, you know, you all and we have had a major focus on Thursday night when we first put it in. And we've still not seen any kind of uh, uh, elevation of injuries. So I think we have this down. See, that is the bullcrap statistic that they cooked up 10 years ago. Here's how they justify short week football. The injury rate in the game between Sunday to Sunday and Sunday to Thursday. The injury rate is the same. That completely overlooks whether or not players have had sufficient recovery time, whether it's good for the long-term health of the players to be playing on artificial turf four days apart with only three days off in between, whether or not there are key players that would be available to play if we were on a Sunday to Sunday schedule, not Sunday to Thursday or Saturday to Wednesday. That's what they're going to do. The four teams that will play on Wednesday, Christmas Day, will play not the same games. They'll reshuffle and play the Saturday before Christmas. 
So Saturday to Wednesday is the same as Sunday to Thursday. This is easy for them to justify. And once you accept and once you use as your frontline defense, there's been no increase in injuries. The injury rate's the same. And that overlooks so many things. And you know it. We've talked about this over the years. That is a baloney, facetious, self-serving argument that is fully in support of the one thing that the league cares about. And when I say the league, I mean the league office, chasing as many dollars as possible. This helps them chase more dollars, and they use that argument to shout down people like me who'd say, what about the guy who maybe is healthy enough to play but not, you know, not really or really shouldn't be playing or whatever the case may be? What about the wear and tear on the human body and playing game on Sunday? And game? They don't care about that. All they care about is the injury because that's the statistic that supports their chase for more dollars. Yeah, I, I mean, you, well said. I I'm, I'm totally agree. You're right. I, I don't think it's it's necessarily about that. It's you're you're not getting a lot of players maybe at their best. You're not getting the coaching at their best, like we've talked about. And to me, yeah, it's more about the cumulative effect, right? That would be the thing to look for. Maybe that's what we need to look up to see or or or, or check out, right? When we have this conversation next time, what is the what is those teams that play on those two games four days apart? How about the next week? How many people are miss, missing that game? Whatever. But it takes a toll on you. We know that. I don't care what the numbers say or anything like that. All players will tell you that. To play four, you know, two games in four days is tough. And, and what we all look at as the most physical team sport in the world, Yeah, it, it's, again, it, it's not killing guys. I get it. But for them to frame it and be like, oh, it's perfectly fine. It's just a normal week. You know, I don't think that's fair either to, to what you're saying. And, 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 and look, th- this is the thing about statistics. If you have smart people, if you have creative people, and if you have people who are willing to do whatever needs to be done and say whatever needs to be said to support the broader goals of the organization, you can find a statistic that will support you. They've tried to create a debate based upon statistics over grass versus artificial turf when anecdotally – Players want to play on grass. It's not about injury rate. It's about how my body feels the next morning when it's time to get out of bed. Am I injured? No. Do I feel like shit? Yes. That, but that, that doesn't factor into the statistics that they cite to create a phony debate because they're too cheap to retrofit the stadiums with high-quality grass, except when FIFA says the only way you're going to have World Cup games is if you do it. So, you know, I made this point yesterday in the aftermath of the hip drop tackle. The NFL is all in for player safety as long as it doesn't cost anything or it doesn't infringe on a revenue stream. If there's money to be made, forget about player safety. If it's going to cost too much money, forget about player safety. They'll never say it that way. No. But that's well, that's what the spe- that's back to, to our segment that. one. That's what the special teams coaches are, you know, like I've told you. That's basically what they're saying. Like, they don't really care about safety. It's just they infringed on our area. But, hey, there's 10 other areas here where I could go, hey, this can be improved for player safety. Yeah. And, you know, they shun it. I think that's, you know, what frustrates right. everybody a little bit, Mike, to your point. And, w- and, what, and what needs to be said to those special teams coordinators is in that specific instance, they are concerned about one very specific aspect of safety, somebody having a broken neck and dying on the field in a high-speed collision and a kick return. That's the element of player safety they're concerned yeah. about. I assume and I hope for the player, but also for their own interests. I mean, I mean, let's, let's be realistic about it. People say to me, well, why do you hate the NFL? I don't hate the NFL. I love the NFL. I was indoctrinated by John Facenda and NFL films into thinking that professional football is something that deserves to be put on a pedestal. And as I got older and realized it's really a business and follow the money and be suspicious of those who are trying to accumulate as much money as possible to the detriment of those who are playing the game, that is where my function is. And it's not about hating the NFL. It's about holding the NFL accountable to get them to go against this quest by the commissioner. Frankly, I'm going to say it. He wants $25 billion per year in revenue by 2027. Well, certain things get in the way of the effort to get to $25 billion per year by 2027. Like spending money on this or passing on an opportunity to carve off these Christmas games. And I haven't heard this for a fact yet, but, you know, these aren't just going to be part of the package that Fox, CBS, NBC, and ABC are already paying for. They're going to take those two Sunday games and they're going to sell them to the highest bidder. I guarantee you they're going to do that. Christmas, they're not right? just going to say, it yeah, hell package. yes. Yeah, right, right. We want $200 million for that game. I mean, look, w- 
what 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 did we pay? 150 million? Was that the number? 110 I million? 120 110. million? I thought it was 100. It's nine figures. Right. 110. 110 million for the wild card playoff game. Amazon this year. 120 million for the wild card playoff game. What do you think they're going to get for the Wednesday Christmas games? What do you think they're at least going to get that much? They're going to go and they're going to go back to the well. And and I'm not saying there's not value in having those games. There's tremendous value in having those games. But the, 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 and I got no. I'm a capitalist. I got no problem with chasing the money. But there are points where the chase for the money maybe isn't the right thing to do. And maybe you're ignoring facts or twisting facts or warping reality to support your chase for the money. That's what this is all about. So they justify short week football. And Chris, like you said, there's going to be more. I, I, I was thinking the other day or just yesterday, the other day, it was just yesterday. Cause it all happened yesterday. Like, wh- why are you slamming the door on other Wednesdays? Like, like, how about the night before Thanksgiving? How long until they decide we're going to drop a game there? Like that's kind of a captive audience. People are home baking pies. Agreed. Right. I would love. Everybody's kind of chilled, yes, hanging out. Right. And so we'll find a way to play a, a game on on Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah. And thirty million people will watch it, and one of the networks will pay a hundred million dollars to televise it. Yeah. No. I. I mean, I'm with you. I, listen, we're, we're we're our hearts in the right place. We, we we want the game to be better. We want it to grow. We want all of that. You know. But at the same time, yeah, we're gonna. We're going to call the NFL out when we see BS. We want what's best for the players, and we don't want the game changed or ruined just for like what you're talking about, bottom line dollars or all of that. And I think that's where you and I you know, tend to push back on the NFL. It has nothing to do with hating the NFL. It's the exact right, opposite right. of that, really. Well, but, but we're conflicted on this, too, because, you know – I kind of like having a game on every. I mean, this is where Peter got mad at me because I think he could see the twinkle in my eyes. I was talking about it because I said, "Oh, Peter, I'm not saying I want this. I'm just saying the NFL is going to do it, and that's true." But you know, after 15 years of trying to watch eight, nine, ten games at once in the NBC viewing room, you and I both are on the same page. The more of those games you can peel out and drop on. Wednesday night, Tuesday night, I would have no problem whatsoever with a full season of Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night, lather, rinse, repeat. Me neither. I'd like it. You'd like it. A lot of people like it. Because those Monday and Thursday nights, now maybe it would get to the point where it'd be overload, but man, that's special during football season. Because for us, Sundays are so freaking hectic. To have that night where we're not working, well, we're working, but we're not on. We don't have to be on. We can watch the game and enjoy the game for what it is. And yeah, I, I yeah, I'd love to be able to watch more games in prime time. Yeah, but I, mean, I also want to do it in a way that works for the players. Yeah, no, that's right. They got to find that. They got to find what's right. You know, tinker with the schedule, figure out how they can maximize rest for these guys and do it the right way. But. Uh, I, I, you know, again, I, I'm hoping this whole Christmas on a Wednesday thing kind of opens the door to this conversation full time because I'm with you. I'd like to see it as well. Right. And, and you would think, yeah, it'd be easy to, hey, it's Tuesday night football on YouTube. You know, it's Wednesday night football on Apple TV, whatever. They'd be able to spell, sell extra special packages for those nights. Uh, oh. You know, I, I think it's inevitable. I really do. Just like 18 game schedule, all of that. I just feel like it's all going this way. Uh, the game is too big. The sport's too big. It's too big in our country. Everybody wants to watch it. And even if it was a Wednesday night, gosh, this team's three and seven and the other team's four and eight, it's still the best thing on TV and it's still the best reality thing, the reality TV there is out there. And, you know, we're going to have big, and, big viewing numbers. And it doesn't matter what the team's records are because people want to tune in yeah. and bet on something. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing yeah. that's driving this. You need increased inventory for things people can bet on. That's the big part of this too. And we'd be naive if we didn't mention that. It's not just watching for the for the pure love of the game. You've got people who want to watch so they can bet during the game, before the game, after the game to chase their losses or celebrate their wins on anything and everything about professional football. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.